So earlier this month, we got the first episode after four years of waiting of Attack on Titan Season 2, Japanese dub. And I was so excited. I was like, yes, finally, after so long, we're getting more Attack on Titan. And then I got even more excited because I found out at the end of this month, we were getting the English dub. And so I'm here to do a second review series, this time on Attack on Titan Season 2. And if you guys want, I can even do a review on Season 1. But right now, we're jumping straight into Season 2. So... Yeah, let's just get into it. First of all, I've never read the manga. I know some things of what happened later on down the line, but for the most part, please do not spoil anything in the comments. Uh, you can leave all the discussion thoughts that you want down below and things like that, but please, no spoilers or anything like that, especially for people who haven't read it either. I just want to try to keep this completely spoil-free. But I will be talking about Season 1 in this review as well, because, obviously, a lot of things tie into it. So the episode opens up with, a, with Armin giving a review, because he's like the narrator of the series, giving a review of Season 1, how the Titans broke through the wall, the cadets trained, they found out there were Titans hidden among them, and the battle between Eren who is a titan for justice, more or less. That's not his title or anything, but that's pretty much what he is. Against Annie Leonhardt, who was a fellow cadet in the 104th Corps, who could turn into a titan. They can both turn into titans at will. Annie has a lot more, had a lot more control over her ability than Eren, but Eren's form ultimately beat hers. So this episode starts off immediately after that. And they have Annie in, ca in custody. She encased herself in this crystal-like material before being killed by Aaron. Well, she wasn't killed. She's still alive within that thing, as far as we know. And she's getting taken away. And all of a sudden, a lot of the scouts are looking up at the wall and pointing. And Section Commander Hanji comes over. She looks up, and there's a titan inside one of the walls. Like, its face is, is visible And when Annie was trying to climb up the wall. When Aaron put when she fell, she pulled out some of the brickwork and exposed his face. And everyone's just obviously they're stunned. They're like, "What the hell is a Titan doing inside the wall?" You know, they're just freaking out. And all of a sudden, Pastor Nick shows up. He's an asshole who popped up a few times in the first season. He shows up. He's like, "No matter what, you cannot let sunlight reach it. If you if sunlight touches it, it will come back to fully being alive." Because right now it's like in a state of unconsciousness, I guess you could say. So Hanji has her people make a construct like a cloth material to put over the Titan's face. And she questions Nick. She's like, what the hell is going on? But he doesn't he doesn't say anything. Even when she threatens to throw him over the side of a bill of over the side of the wall, the dude just like drop me. I'm ready to die for my faith. So I have to give him credit. Dude's got some balls. He is not afraid to stand his ground. But Hanji ultimately doesn't do it and just throws him aside. And she's like, oh, come on, I would never do something like that. But she wants to know if there's titans inside all the walls. But he doesn't give her that even. And suddenly, all, um, after Hanji lets Nick go and all that, uh, bell starts ringing and there's a courier coming in. He's got a message for Commander er Ervin. I think it's Ervin. It's either Erwin or Ervin. I'm not entirely sure. But I think it's Ervin. I could be wrong, but I'm probably wrong. But he's saying that Titans have breached Wall Rose, which so far has been a no-go. There's Wall Maria, or Maria, however you want to say it. Wall Rose, and then Wall Cena. Uh... And those are the three major. Uh, those are the three walls that protect humanity from the Titans. But if I do a season one review, I'll go into more detail on that. And like I said, Wall Wal Maria is the only one that has been breached so far that they know of. So for Titans to be inside Wall Rose, that's a big deal. So when we cut to twelve hours earlier, we catch up with members of the one hundred and fourth Cadet Corps. They're all recovering. From the battle and all that, they're not allowed to train or they're pretty much under house arrest right now after what happened at the end of season one. Their superiors are still armed and all that, but they're not allowed to train or anything like that. 
and everyone's saying like yeah i wish we could go home because connie and sasha they're two uh i don't want to say major characters but they're like major side characters from the first season they have villages their home villages aren't too far from where they currently are and they're thinking about well connie at least is thinking about sneaking out to go home and all of a sudden sasha starts freaking out she's like i hear footsteps i hear footsteps and everyone's like oh come on there have to be titans around for you to hear footsteps and up on the tower section commander mika who is one of my not my one of my favorite characters but he's one of the more interesting characters he's suddenly f- starts freaking out too because he has a very acute sense of smell so he can smell when titans are approaching which is a very useful ability so he has the other commanders go and inform the scouts and the cadets and all that tell them to get ready to go and there's no time for the cadets to gear up so they all got to get on horses and go warn the nearby villages so as they're all amassing themselves to get ready to go and one of the commanders is given some speech about this being humanity's darkest hour the titans suddenly start sprinting like at full speed and normally titans do not run this is the first time we've seen normal like there's there's a couple of different stages of titans there's normal titans there's abnormal titans and then there's titan shifters like Aaron and Le- uh, Annie I almost said Leia but her name's Annie I don't think there's a Leia in this this is in Star Wars so titan shifters are the only ones we've seen and abnormals are the only ones we've seen sprinting but all of these things suddenly start sprinting at full speed so there's no way they're all abnormal uh, well, actually, there is one point in Season 1 where we see normal Titans running, but that's that was for a completely different reason. But anyway, so Mika breaks up from the rest of the group, and he charges the Titans alone. And someone's like, I got, I'm going to go with him to help out. But the guy he left in charge is like, no, his skills are second only to Captain Levi. He'll be fine. And Levi is a fucking badass. <laughs> like, he is the uh what's the best description he's like the goku of this he is just the go-to guy he just gets shit done right now he's got a hurt leg but that was that was mikasa's fault is another badass but she's not quite on his level but she could get there and they both have the last name ackerman i don't know if they're going to go into any detail on that later on but anyway mika breaks off and the scouts go ahead to warn the villages and Connie got permission from Mika before he left to go home and check up on his village because that's the his village is in the same direction that the Titans are coming from. So after Mika goes off to hold off the Titans, and I apologize if you hear this very chattery little bird outside. I mean, you probably can hear him because it looks like my mic is picking it up. But if you can't, good. If you can, I apologize. Not much I can do about him. But anyway, when Mika breaks off, that we have a cut to a weird flashback with Mikasa and Aaron and his mother who uh, scolds him for picking fights with everyone who's mean to him. You can't pick a fight with everyone who's mean to you. And she's like, you know, you could try to protect a Mikasa every now and then instead of having her rescue all the time. And Aaron wakes up. He's still recovering from his battle against Annie. And Mikasa is there watching him. Well, actually, she's sleeping right now fell asleep watching him she's very protective of Aaron very very protective uh, he gets up and then Mikasa wakes up and they have a little bit of dialogue before Armin their best friend comes barging in telling them that the Titans have supposedly broken through Wall Rose and Armin or no Ervin I'm sorry uh, is talking to Levi and one of their subordinates is like it was a really good idea leaving Mika in charge he could definitely keep things and keep things in order down there and Aravin's like well, yeah hopefully we'll see so we cut back to Mika who just got done killing the, his fifth titan they say there's like nine titans in the group that he went to battle against so he's killed five of nine which is very impressive and he's contemplating whether he could take out the last four but he's like better not risk it I've done enough I have held them off long enough so I'm gonna leave so he calls for his horse. They all are trained to do one of those whistles with like your thumb and your forefinger. I've never, or your pointer finger. I've never been able to do it, but it would be really cool to learn. But as he's waiting for his horse, he sees a very abnormal Titan. 
it's 17 meters and the tallest normal category of titan is 15 meters this thing's 17 meters and it's just gigantic it's got ridiculously long arms it's covered in fur it's just it's a beast titan more or less that is the name of it the beast titan and he's just like i really got to keep an eye on this thing and i'll report back to ervin when i get to base all of a sudden he sees his horse coming and he's like okay cool now i can get out of here and then the thing picks up his horse and the titans have never gone for horses before except for one other titan uh if i do a season one review we'll talk about that and the dude literally chucks the horse so hard that it's like creating a sound barrier effect and the poor thing smashes into the roof causing Mika to fall and he gets caught by one of this, this little midget titan who starts to chomp on his leg and then the beast titan I don't think that's a spoiler called revealing its name not really the beast titan tells it to wait it can talk so he uh, leans down and he starts talking to Mika after crushing the titan's face because it proceeded to try eating him anyway He's asking him, what's that thing on your waist, your ODM gear? And, you know, where did you, why do you use swords and all that? It's because you know res we reside in the nape. And Mika is just so confused, terrified. He's just, he's scared speechless. He can't move. And the thing's just like, oh, okay, well, if you're not going to talk, I'm just going to take it. And the thing picks up his ODM gear, like, the it just chucked a horse so you know the thing is powerful and it just delicately takes his odm gear and he's walking away mika gets up getting ready to fight still even though he can't do shit without his odm gear and the thing's just like oh yeah you guys can move now and the three remaining titans just charge poor mika and they just rip him to pieces every time someone gets eaten by these things I just feel so bad but at the same time it gives me undeniable pleasure no I'm just kidding it does not I'm just like oh my god that's like the worst fate you could imagine Ugh. just imagine just being picked up by something and if you're lucky it'll start at your head if you're not it's gonna eat you limb by limb before swallowing you and you could still be alive when this thing swallows you like these titans are no joke Ugh. but overall this was an amazing opening episode the art and animation mwah, 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 just so beautiful so was the first season so it was a four year gap but it definitely didn't dip in quality or anything like that the voice acting it's been four years since they've had to do these parts so i can understand them being a little rusty at first but i have great confidence they're going to get back in the groove of it levi sounded just fine aaron sounded fine mikasa sounded fine armin needs a little bit of work uh hanji i feel like she needs a little bit of work and so does pastor nick but overall voice acting is good i will say one thing though i have been watching the japanese episodes i like the dialogue in the japanese version better i like just being able to watch the episode and not have to worry about reading subtitles but i do like the actual dialogue in the japanese version better but anyway this has been a really long review i don't want these to be super super long but i just i'm just really excited that we get to see season two so yeah this is my review on episode one just aired today go watch it definitely check out the first season if you want leave a comment saying we want a season one review and i will do it if not no big deal so yeah i will see you next i'll actually see you tomorrow for my review on super episode 14 and i'll see you next week for a review of episode two of attack on titan season two english dub i will see you then